so there's it's, it sounds all much more grown up so there's, a, there's obviously been a lot of life changes uh, one was moving out to the west coast obviously not there now and uh, was, was it yeah. a, a deliberate effort to make a record that was more mature in a sense um yeah i think for me well during the time that i w have been away for for a while i actually studied music production um so I was really getting into the sonics and like more the production side of things. And I think, you know, I found that I'm very much into um, a lot of music that was coming up in, in the States and stuff. And just a certain tone, like I'm more like kind of analog, like vintage saturated kind of sound. So um, it's been nice, you know, having, you know, being able to, you know, have the creative control and, and, and develop that idea. So, um, yeah, but thank you for saying it sounds mature. I am more mature. <laughs> well, in, a good, in a good way, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to make music because music's such a teenage thing. You know, when you get into it and those yeah. memories, a lot of musicians find it very hard to break out of that kind of mindset. I mean, was that just something you found that's happened naturally or was that, did you, did you have to push yourself into a more sort of grown up, grown up version? <clears throat> no, no, that, that has just happened naturally. And I think, yeah, with age, definitely. And I don't know, it's, it's, uh, you know, I mean, you probably know what it's like when you're signed to a, a record label. Um, I was signed very young and you, you know, I always had the sound in my head that I wanted to make for records, but you get influenced by, you know, a lot of people being excited about you doing certain things and, you know, ideas change. And luckily enough that they didn't, you know, I always had, you know, quite a bit creative control over my music, but um, I think just being the person now that drives my own like car has now, that maybe that's when the maturities come in, you know, having to be in control of it myself and um, and manage it. And it's kind of like, you really have to ask yourself the questions like, you know, is this really, is this, am I feeling this, you know, is this the music that I want to put out? And like, I think, you know, it takes a lot of time to feel comfortable and confident uh, in what you're going to be self-releasing. So, yeah. So yeah, sonically and business-wise, what was your book emotionally as well and musically? Yeah, yeah, totally. I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we we do, don't we? We I think we 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 want to get better, don't we, as songwriters and our, as musicians? I think, you know, I've always wanted to be an artist that you know keeps making records and. I hope to progress and get better every time. I think, yeah, if that wasn't the aim, it would be a bit strange. I mean, do you find you, you can dig deeper now or, well, you're always digging deeper anyway, but even, even deeper now. Yeah. I think now, like, it, it just, there's different, you know, there's different, I, I'm trying to reflect more externally within my music, um, you know, and just, you know, make it, less inwards so i think that that's something that i noticed when i was younger i used to always wear my heart on my sleeve a bit too much and um and now i think i'm a bit more you know cautious about you know i think today a lot of people you know need more uplifting music um and i think that it's you know i'm more conscious of making music that's for everybody whereas before I was very inwards and just like just expressing everything that I felt and so yeah so you're trying to make those uh, emotions those feelings more universal I guess so yeah mm. that's a that's a, that's a better way to say it <laughs> so by you moved to LA last was it last year yeah yeah and was that I mean, obviously, because you're trying to get the sounds that, and it's it's quite interesting, really, because when I was growing up, LA was always looked on as being a, a city where everyone made their records way too smooth, way too overproduced. But now, is where you go to make a lo-fi record and get immersed in that, like you say, that super saturated analog sound. So yeah, you, yeah. So you moved to LA. 
Um, that's quite a life changing experience. And was that, was that part of that as well? Just something to close one chapter and open a new chapter? It was, yeah, it's, uh, I think I just had this drive um, to, well, yeah, like I said, you know, being in control of my own project, I, you know, I'd always wanted to make records in America and I'd always pushed for that when I was working with people, but um, it never happened that way. And, you know, I just thought, you know, there was, you know, um, a lot of music I was listening to at the time, um, Blake Mills, um, I really love his stuff. Um, you know, I was a big fan of Ryan Adams, obviously, before all this stuff came out and stuff. And, you know, I was following the musicians that played with him and stuff. And I was like, why not just like go and fucking try and immerse myself within the places that these people are playing, you know, the venues. And I did, I just went over there and just started going to gigs and getting to know all these musicians. And then, you know, on my first single I released like a few months back, um, Harrison Whitford from Phoebe Bridges band like played on my track and uh, also like the steel player that played on the track was the producer of The National and uh, these are just people I met in venues that had like 20 people watching them you know and so yeah I think yeah that was the best thing that I did and I obviously I loved it so much out there I just I just didn't I felt like I was a different person out there I think you know um, like having released records here twice now on majors and been around for a long time. It's kind of like up there, I felt like, I felt like I could just be me for the first time because, you know, I've not really explored America before. So I felt like this confidence came through that's not been there for a while. And um, yeah, it was, it, it's a nice feeling, you know, Do you think it's like starting again. Yeah. yeah. It's quite interesting. Like, as an artist, that's good, that challenge of going somewhere where it's a clean slate. People don't know who you are, so they don't have any expectations. You could be anybody you want. That's quite mm. a creative kind of space to be in, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, I've made a lot of nice friends out there. And, I mean, obviously, you've probably experienced LA. It's a, it's a bizarre place. And it, it does, you do get inspired by how bizarre it is. Uh, but yeah, the music scene, amazing. There's some crazy stuff going on out there and it just blows me away. Like the level of, you know, the players and producers and yeah, it's very exciting. How bizarre, I mean, how bizarre did you find LA? I mean, we're both from Blackpool and what I found when I went to LA was how, it was, it was just like Blackpool with sunshine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think that that's why I find it stri slightly strange, like, you know, especially, well, it, it's, it's sad as well, like socially, you know, there's a lot of the homeless, um, there's a lot of homelessness now. Um, I, and there is a, quite a lot of weird and strange and crazy characters, but, you know, a lot of them are not, not very well. Uh, but yeah, it is, it's kind of like, there's two sides to LA, isn't it? Well, maybe three sides. There's like, you know, people that you don't really see that are like just, your average working class, you know, and then there's you know, the high life that you don't even touch on unless you're super famous. And that's all like, you don't get invited to them parties. And then you get all the, the you know, then you get all the young, like rich kids, like Coachella types that are just like partying all the time. And, and everyone wants to be your best friend and help you. But really the next day, like <laughs> they don't even get back to you. It's crazy. But I find that just funny, you know, how fickle people can be over there. But like I said, I've made some good friendships and um, that's what's important. So, Did you find, um, after a bit of time there, yes, you're immersed in the culture and it affects you and it gives you a, a chance to reinvent things. But you also find in a weird way, it actually brings you more close to what you were already. I guess that's, yeah, I guess it does. I think it reminds me of my my old self I you know I think I've been through I've been on a really roller coaster journey and like it does like knock fucking 10 bells out of you it's just it's it's difficult to you know pick yourself up sometimes and I think yeah out there reminds me of yeah how I used to be and it gives me this drive and this ambition that I used to have that fire in my belly that you know that uh yeah it all comes back, so I love it. 
now, now we've entered another really massive life-changing situation. You're back in London, and now, like the rest of us, you're stuck. <laughs> <Double. I> know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I've been... Um... I've been doing a lot of like creative stuff. I've been doing gigs online actually, um, which has been really nice. It started with, um, I did this gig for the COVID arms. I don't know if you've heard of that gig. Yeah. And they asked me to do that. And then I thought off the back of that, I was like, right, I should be doing these myself. So I've done three now and they've all been really well attended. And uh, uh, it's a different way of life though. You know, having to navigate through hundreds of people on Zoom. That's really hard. It's like learning how to gig again. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking to do some more like charitable projects um, over the next few weeks. I don't want to mention anything just in case it doesn't come off. But, um, but yeah, um, yeah, looking to do some fundraising things um, to keep me busy. Has it affected your creativity as well? Do you find your writing differently? Do you, does your music get more introspective or? Well, it makes no difference at all. You just go back into the bubble of creativity. It could be anywhere, anytime. Um, no, I, I do feel like it's different. Um, what happens with me these days is that things don't come as often anymore. I think uh, I've really got to feel like completely passionate about something to, for, for me to sit down and for a song to just come naturally. But... Um, yeah, I, I guess it has changed my perspective on stuff because I'm I'm thinking more about like how the end product's going to be, and I think that I think more about like tones, and I I you know when I'm writing, you know I'm I'm playing off different like sonic ideas and 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 sounds and through different guitar amps, you know, just to try and encourage like more like fresh ideas and what I used to do before with just an acoustic guitar. So. Mm. Is, yeah. is, that, is that the curse of writing on a laptop where you got about 50,000 choices? <laughs> oh my God, I hate that. I hate it. Like the laptop for me has really, it's put me in a place where um, you're just like writing ideas and then you start like putting like a drum loop down and then you're building up a song and then it's just, I, for me, it took away that like that creative process for a while where I'd just sit with a guitar and write a whole song in my hand. And I, 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 I'm trying to go back to, the, it's been hard trying to go back just to the guitar and sit and do it that way because I've been writing on the laptop for so long that I was finding that, I don't know, I'm, I'm, it doesn't satisfy me as much as when I'm sat there figuring it out just with me and the guitar. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that whole world, isn't it, of electronic music production? It's yeah. Even though I've been studying it for like <laughs> a few years, I still find it really difficult to to do it well. Did you find the more you studied, the more lo-fi and the more and the more layers you were taking off, or you'd like to take off? Yes. Yeah. Completely. I realised how much I was in like love with like Barry Gordy and um, you know all the Hitsville stuff and. Sam, you know, Sam Phillips and 1950s kind of really raw, just like I learned how to produce in studios. So using like, you know, outboard gear and just like analog stuff um, and recording to tape. And I think that that was, for me, you know, I'd be happy just recording to a four track, you know, like a Tascam mm -hmm. and, and doing stuff like that, which I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna maybe explore like further down the line um because i love that you know elliot smith stuff you know that really lo-fi you know yeah sound and i think well it just sounds wonderful today doesn't it you know everyone's kind of wanting to go back in time these days <laughs> you know i think pop music is is so limited and so bright and just loud it's really loud and not dynamic so i think we're all craving that them dynamics in music i know there's a lot there's so much great music coming out at the mm. moment isn't that um yeah the, which, which is a nightmare for an artist <laughs> it's a nightmare yeah I'm, I'm a super big fan at the moment of car seat headrest you know that band mm -hmm. they're just phenomenal that last record is just phenomenal um yeah <laughs> it does it makes you think oh god like they're so good 
Um, but you know, I, you know, one day I'd I'd like to be be making records as good as that. And you know, you just got to believe, and you'll get there, right? I mean, the, the hardest thing I think is to concentrate on yourself. You know, when there's so much, so many distractions of great music or loads of different styles. They, they, of course, they're going to seep into your consciousness, but mm -hmm. somehow, a true artist kind of wipes all that away and finds their own muse somewhere in the middle of that. And do you find you're quite good at doing that, sort of blocking out the noise? Um, I, I don't. I don't think I'm good at it. I think when I'm trying to write and stuff, I won't listen to stuff for a few days, um, because you know, like I said, it can. You can get a lot of outside influence, and even if it's like melodic stuff, and you have, I have to go back and think, oh, what's that melody similar to, or, you know, what I mean, um, like I'm super inspired by the War on Drugs records, and I find that his stuff always comes into my stuff, like. <laughs> I just, I love it so much. And, you know, Bruce Springsteen too, there's a lot of that um, melodically that feeds in. So yeah, I have to be really wary and I, I try not to listen to the radio when I'm trying to be productive. <laughs> so when this is over, if it's ever over, are you, are you planning to go back to LA and continue the adventure? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be going back there for sure. And I'll, I'll be coming back here as well because, you know, ideally I'd like to get on the road. Um, I know I've only released a couple of songs, but I'm going to release another one in another couple of months. Um, I'm just going to build it up with singles and the videos for now um, until early next year. Um, so yeah, I'd like to come back and get on the road. That would be the most amazing thing because, uh, you know, I'd like to do it with the band, more full of arrangements and just, you know, take a more like, you know, um, do some more, like really cool, like more like hipster type venues and just put it into a different category, I think. I think that's important. So I'd love to do that. Uh, but yeah, um, be going back out there as soon as I can um, to work again with Tim. Yeah, and to continue the journey. Did you find uh, when you were in LA and, you, and you're becoming more of a, an American stylized kind of artist, it's probably a leading for a question asked before, but did you find, did you find something very British about you as well? <laughs> yeah. Hybrid, yeah, Atlantic hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people like that, I think. I think they like the little bit of British. I think it makes people find me more interesting I guess um but I do notice my roots for sure because like I said like you know out there in LA people are very very middle class and very educated and stuff so sometimes I find that I'm not speaking too much because just if I let on too much of my personality that can be quite judgmental you see <laughs> <laughs> would you say that was the British part what, what about artistically what would be the British part would you be like a little cloud on, on the permanent blue skies or <laughs> I think oh actually I don't know I just think I'm a very rowdy drunk <laughs> <laughs> maybe just a little bit too rock and roll so you know out there it's all very zen so mm -hmm. yeah it's such a change cities from 20-30 years ago yeah I know. Yeah, gentrification, isn't it? It's all, yeah. It's the same with New York as well. It's all uh, changed, you know. Uh, I'm just reading a really cool book about it actually called uh, The Gentr Gentrification of a, of a Lost Mind. I think that's what it's called, or Gentrification of the Mind. And it's about how all the middle class people, you know, in the well, late 60s, 70s, 80s, during all the AIDS thing came into. New York from the suburbs and, you know, started, you know, shutting down, right, making restaurants at like chains and stuff like chain restaurants and all the independent, you know, food restaurants and hangouts for artists were all like closing down and how that's all changed now. It's such a good book. Interesting. Yeah. It's all going to change back. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I hope so. That's that's the other thing about Blackpool. I don't know how much you ever go back. I go back a few times a year, and it's mm. just one place you go to where none of that has ever happened, does it? No, I I mean I went there yeah just when I came back after Christmas to visit mum and stuff, and um and see friends and it's heartbreaking. It's 
it's I just it's so, so sad that like you know it could be so amazing um but you know just no money gets put into that place well they just spent two, 20 million on a bloody tram track going to the train station and yeah, that really upset <laughs> yeah. you know why would anyone want to take a tram up Talbot Road when there's all them shops that are like shut down it looks <laughs> terrible it's <Yeah>. crazy <laughs> Oh, I just wish there was more opportunity for kids and stuff there. That's, you know, I'd love to be able, I'd love to invest uh, if I ever made, you know, enough money into something like a project for kids musically, really. Mm. You got out though, didn't you? I did. I was very lucky. And uh, I, yeah, I'm so grateful that, you know, I remember I was so naughty in school and they offered me drum lessons to like calm down because I was like proper ADHD and it, it changed my life, you know, give me that mm. thing, you know, and it, it's, it's, I wish everyone had, was given opportunities because so many people would do so many amazing things in, in Blackpool, but the opportunities is just not there. Mm, it's true. You have to be quite driven to get out of that place, don't you? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> cool. Well, brilliant. That, that's, that, that's 20 minutes is what I will need because I filmed it to put up as a little film. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I guess normally you say what you're up to today, but I kind of know what people are up to. They're just going to sit in the settee. <laughs> <try and do something. laughs> it's not like anybody's going anywhere, is it? <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, it was great to speak to you and lovely to, yeah, just lovely to see you. It's been so long. Yeah. Last time I saw you, I was just thinking, was it a Rebellion Punk Festival in Blackpool? That must be about six or seven years ago. Oh, right, yeah, I must have seen you in passing. Yeah, I um, saw you there. It was just dead, dead quick. Yeah, but you just you just happened to be there, and that was the last time I'd seen you. Before that, I'd seen you a few times around and about, because cause you were working with Karen then, weren't you, Karen Boardman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw you at, I think it was, well, a festival you introduced me or something. Uh, yeah, way back. Oh, what was I going to say then before I went? Oh, Rebellion. Yeah, that's a great festival, isn't it? It's good that they're continuing that in Blackpool because that's always, it's amazing when you see all the punks and stuff. It's the third big um, money earner for Blackpool every year now. I know, I know. I was just, I really, this is the, I was thinking, you know, there's got to be someone that can invest in like, you know, a 500 capacity venue there just for like touring bands, you know, they've got the boot like social, which is a um, really good venue now, but I just, something, you know, that people would take seriously. And, There's a great mm -hmm. venue now open last year, the Waterloo Hotel. Okay. They made that into a venue and it's got an amazing PA in it. And it's and the guy, really? runs, he's just a music fan. We've done a great job. You can stay upstairs because it's a hotel. So he's got some of the rooms. It's quite rough and ready, but it's great. What he's, he's set up there. We played there last year. It's oh, really? Big, it's the best live sound I've ever had. The guy's Pete, he's got this incredible PA in it. And wow. they get a really good turnout. It's busy when we played there. So you should do that on your tour whenever you get to tour again. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that like, there's a lot of venues like that when... I was touring with a band called the Americans that uh, from the States, uh, they're Americana band. And there's loads of these little like social clubs and, you know, pubs that have like these rooms upstairs that have, and there's this like underground uh, Americana like um, scene that I didn't even know about. Um, and all these venues that I was uh, finding that were just like amazing. Um, yeah. I've never heard about, but yeah, that's cool. I'll check it out. I never knew that the Waterloo had done that. Yeah, it's about 300 capacity, and you still got the bowling green at the back, the little stands on it. <laughs> I can't remember. From oh, that. nice. <laughs> you're you're from the end of town, aren't you? You're, you're South Shore, aren't you? No, North, North Shore. Yeah. Well, I grew up, sure. yeah, I grew up in Leighton. Oh, okay. I grew up in Leighton. And then I moved to Martin, and then, yeah, and then we moved back to North Shore. So I've always lived just behind the Hilton there. Oh, right, just right by the, the prom then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, know, I, know, I know which little area, yeah. Just just when you're getting into town, isn't it? That end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant, cool. All right, well, um, I guess I'll uh, speak to you somewhere out there after all this is over. Yeah, Yeah. no, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate your support. That's really great no, that no. you want to 
I like the, um, the song that Rob sent me. It was really good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good I luck. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. All right, Creamer. See you soon. Yeah.